The Z pool form system is the easiest and most economical way to pour a concrete pool coping. It offers a wide variety of reusable edge profiles. This new forming system comes from Concrete Countertop Solutions, the innovative company that brought you the Z Counterform and Z Liquicrete systems. Today I'm going to show you our forming system for a swimming pool coping, which could be used on either vinyl liner pools, concrete pools, or fiberglass pools. Typically, a vinyl liner pool is always built the same way. The liner hangs off of a track. Um, the tracks are t normally aluminum. I have a piece of track here to show you. This particular track is made by Cardinal, and it's called the HZ track. Cinderella also makes a very similar track, and it's called the HM1 track. As you can see, the vinyl liner hangs off of that track. Between the top of the liner and the track, there's a little space in there which allows our swimming pool form to fit right inside of. Put it in, tap it in with either a rubber mallet or a dead blow hammer, and it's in place. It's as simple as that. It's really easy to install. You don't have to worry about leveling anything. There's no way concrete could leak in between any of it here and spill over the side of the pool. Then when we get to a radius, we have a form which is very flexible. We have a pre-cut for you so there's no fooling around in the field. And that just goes in the same exact way. You can see how nice they fit in. Again, we'll tap it in place. Coming to another straight section. Anywhere where we're using a piece of radius form, if you notice, we have all the cuts. So obviously, when we pour the concrete from the back side, it's going to leak through. So we have a vinyl tape here um, that's cut specially to fit right over the top of this. And it's really stretchy. It goes on really nice. Now the base for our forming system is in place. On top of the base, we have a back piece which again we make in eight foot sections. We're going to start off with a flexible piece because we have a radius here. This just goes right over the top. We'll push it down almost all the way but not all the way yet. Now since we're into a straight piece here we're going to use a piece that is not cut so it's still flexible but not quite as flexible put this in the same way. When we install these two, we like to leave a little gap here, about an eight to a quarter of an inch to figure for expansion. Now that that's complete, we have form liners. This particular liner is our rock face liner. And you'll see when you look at it, it has a little notch in that's going to fit right into the top of our form over here so it locks in place. Once we have it in place, we can push the form down and you'll see that locks our form liner right into place. And it's that easy on a vinyl liner pool. You can see how sturdy everything is. And one of the really nice features with this is you could screed off the top of this form. You don't have to worry about the form crumbling up like typically a styrofoam form would. There's no ties that have to go back into the pool, no screws holding any tie wires. It simply hangs on by itself. On a concrete pool, the forming system is held in place by our receiver track. This is a non-notch receiver track, so it basically won't bend. We do sell a notched receiver track, which is very bendable. So the receiver track will just sit on top of the concrete. We'll drill holes in it. 
right through the concrete. And we'll attach it with our one inch construction screws. These screws are actually multi-purpose heads. You could either use a Phillips tip or a square drive. Once the receiver track is firmly in place, we're gonna put our base form on. It's gonna go on the same exact way we put it on for the liner pull. Just tap it in. and it's ready to go. We'll put our back form on, put our form liner in there, and you're ready to pour the concrete. This is a fiberglass pool, and most fiberglass pools have about a six to eight inch flat lip that runs right across the top. So in order to figure out where we're gonna attach our receiver track, we're gonna take a small piece of receiver track and a small piece of pool form, put them together, and we're gonna now use this as a jig to mark the top of the pool wall so we know where to put that receiver track. We're just gonna hold the receiver track against the pool wall, take our marker, and every now and then we'll put a black mark on top of the pool wall. Now we're gonna use these marks as a guide to put our receiver track in. As you probably noticed, the top of fiberglass pools are never perfect. They always have some slight kinks in them it's just the nature of the beast with a fiberglass pool. But by using our bendable receiver track, we could eliminate that by just rounding out any of those uneven surfaces we have on the sidewall. If we were to use a styrofoam form that were stuck to the sidewall of a fiberglass pool, obviously it's just gonna mirror the shape that the pool already has. There's two ways to mount the receiver track to the top of a fiberglass pool. We could use our polyester mounting tape, which is my favorite, or it could be screwed down. Using the polyester mounting tape really simplifies the job. Just a matter of sticking it down. Now it's as easy as pulling off the backing on the tape and sticking the receiver track down. Using our marks we made earlier as a guide, keeping in mind any imperfections in the sidewall of the pool, we're gonna straighten out with the receiver track. Now you can see how we made really nice radiuses. We kind of smoothed everything out. This section we installed using a 5 8 inch pan head screw. Either method works great. This is our bendable pool form and you can see it's super flexible. It'll go down to a six inch radius without breaking. It's a reusable product. So I like to use a dead blow hammer. They work really nice. It's good to have a set of extra set of hands when putting this on. And you can see this this is the section that I have the receiver track mounted down with the polyester tape and there's no screws at all in here and you can see how well that polyester tape holds. It's my preferred way of mounting the receiver track. We like to leave a little gap when we're bumping the two receiver tracks together figure for some expansion. After installing the base form of the pool form, because this is a flexible form, you'll see there's cuts every inch. That makes it flexible. So we want to fill these gaps with our vinyl tape. 
it's a rubber based tape so it doesn't leave any sticky residue behind um, and it's really stretchy so it bends around the radius is nice so we're just gonna go around the entire length of the pool and apply this tape when you apply this tape try to get it on as wrinkle free as possible keeping in mind that when you pull this form out this tape is going to come out with it so if you do have a lot of wrinkles in it it's going to be a little harder to get this form out later now we're going to install the back piece of the pool form on top of the base again this is our flexible back piece the back of the pool form you'll see has a little receiver on top that allows our pool form liners to lock into place again we'll leave a little gap here about a quarter to an eighth it's as simple as that keep it up just a little bit so we could slide our form liner underneath it and then we'll just lock it down in place. We're using our rock face form liner for this pool. You can see it has a notch that fits right inside of our back form. Locks it into place. So we just tuck it underneath and push the form down on top of it, locking it into place. As you can see it's a super easy system to install. A two-man crew put this whole form on in probably a little over an hour. What we are going to do here is we're going to leave our last piece of form off until tomorrow morning. Um, the reason why we do that is it's going to be really hot today and we will get some expansion with all of these products. That way in the morning we'll come, we'll put that last piece of form liner in, tighten everything up and ready to pour. The concrete contractor now is dusting the forms with a colored powder release and we'll be ready to pour. Here, the contractors are vibrating the concrete with a pencil vibrator. You should run the vibrator along the entire edge of the pool, roughly two inches from inside of the form. This will guarantee that the concrete completely fills the form liners and you'll be left with the perfect edge once the forms are removed. It's approximately 24 hours after the pour and you can see that the concrete contractors cut expansion joints in the concrete before they left yesterday. Now we're going to remove the form. Um, to remove the form we have a special tool that we had made, an extracting tool. This part of the tool goes behind the form. This little rubber pad here will go against the side wall of the pool. It has a little rubber on it. In case we're working on a vinyl liner pool, we don't want to pinch the liner. So we're going to start off by just pulling up the top part of the form and then removing the form liner. We want to do this carefully because these forms are reusable, so we don't want to break anything. And you can see that comes off really easy, pretty clean. Now that Ryan has removed the rubber form liner, We'll take out the base of the form itself using the extracting tool. The first piece is a little hard to get started, but once you get it started, it comes, comes out pretty easy. The 
You can see once it starts coming out, it comes out really easy. All right, we just removed the last form. We have 110 lineal feet of form here. It took 15 minutes. As you can see, we have a perfect rock face edge. We also have a variety of other form liners to choose from. Keep in mind these forms are reusable, so you want to pull the tape off them, clean them out, you'll get many, many uses out of them. Also, at the end of the job, you're not going to be left with 10 contractor bags full of styrofoam that has to be hauled away. <laughs>